there. Welcome to September the 21st edition of Needlepoint TV. I'm Ellen Johnson and I'm going to be your host this afternoon as we chat about all things Needlepoint. I'm delighted to be here with you this afternoon and I know I'm just a little bit late getting started but as you can see we had some lighting issues that are still not quite right but I am so happy to be here with you and um, I welcome you and am just delighted to have you here with me. So um, let's go ahead and start by getting you to say hello, uh, type in where you're watching from, and let me know that you can see me and hear me okay because I want to make sure that the technology is working right. So if you could do that for me, um, if you're watching on Facebook, if you'll give me a thumbs up, and, um, and then I'm also going to hop over here and look at the comments so I can see, <coughs> excuse me, Yes. Okay. Good deal. So I can see y'all can see me and hear me. Okay. Obviously, if you uh, type where you're watching from, then you, then you are, then everything's good to go. So I, I thought what we do this afternoon is chat just a little bit about the workshop that I'm going to be having on October the 17th, because that is what this week's, well, actually last week's blog post was all about. So the blog post, um, let me actually go over and share with you where that is. I need to pull that up really quickly so I can um, show you the uh, blog post all about Stitch Guides Made Simple. Um, it's a live workshop, which I'm super excited about. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So let me... Got a cut. Let's see. Let me get back over here now, and I'm going to share my screen so that you can see. Um, here we go. So, uh oh, wrong screen. I think. Hang on. We're going to stop that share because that's kind of scary looking. <laughs> what I did there. Boy, that was uh, an interesting thing. Let's try this one and share the screen because I think, I think I know what I did. Um, I actually think I shared. Now I can share the screen. So we're going to go here and make sure I get the right one. Hang on. There we go. All right. There. So you should be able to see the blog post and um, it's a uh, all about the workshop. And so let me see. I'm going to make sure Okay, so Renee says she can hear me okay on YouTube. That's good to know. All right, so good. Just before I jump in, I want to make sure that all of the tech is working well and it appears that we're in good shape. So thank you so much for telling me that you can see me and hear me okay. And thanks for those thumbs ups um, if you're watching on Facebook. So, all right. So the workshop actually happens on October the 17th, which is a Saturday. I don't know how many weeks from now it is. It's about, I guess, about four weeks because we just passed, uh, today's the 21st. We just passed the 17th of September. So we're about a month out. And what I'm going to be doing during that time that we're together is I'm going to be actually walking you through step by step using the same formula that I use to write stitch guides for canvases that I stitch myself. And it's the same formula that I used to teach when I had my brick and mortar store. And it's the same formula that I use to teach now inside the Stitchers Club. So we're going to be walking our way through the uh, Stitch Guide formula, which is what I call it. Pretty simple, pretty you know straightforward. That's what it is. We're writing Stitch Guide, so it's the Stitch Guide formula. And I'm gonna walk you through the process of um, evaluating a needlepoint canvas using the elements of art and the principles of design. So that's where you start when you are um, considering writing a stitch guide or using canvas embroidery stitches to embellish a painted canvas for your uh, needlepoint project. And I'll walk you through that process. And then I'll take you through the step by step of what happens once you have that canvas evaluated. So it's not just a Oh, here's one, well, and I'll have. Oh, here's a canvas. Let's see what stitch fits in what space, and let's use that one. That is so not the way <laughs> to approach writing a stitch guide. Trust me, I've been there, I've done that. In fact, if you get my weekly emails, you will read a tiny little story or a snippet of a little story about my first experience in writing stitch guides way back 17 years ago, which was, uh, to put it mildly, 
an unqualified disaster. Um, it was really, really bad. So um, after that, after I had that experience, I decided that I wanted to learn um, all there was to learn about choosing stitches and threads for a needlepoint canvas in order to take that painted canvas and transform it into a three dimensional piece of fiber art, which is what I consider what we're doing. I think when you take a painted canvas and you add canvas embroidery stitches and novelty threads and all that kind of good stuff, um, what you're doing is you're actually creating your own um, interpretation of that canvas and you're interpreting that um, through the use of threads and stitches, and it is becoming a piece of fiber art. And it's three dimensional because you're adding texture and depth to it. So consider yourself a needle artist. And I know some of you don't. I know some of you think, oh, I'm just a stitcher, but you're really not. You are a creative being and you have the ability to do this. I know it seems very intimidating in the beginning, but um, and it is, to be honest, it's not an easy thing to learn how to do, but it is something that you can learn how to do. The key is in learning how to evaluate a canvas properly and then to know what the um, relationships are between color and uh, you also need to understand the relationships between texture and you need to know or have a good solid background in the different kinds of threads that are available and that you may consider using. You also need to understand the relationship between threads and stitches, how they work together and how they can't work or how they can, um, I guess, work against each other or opposed to each other. So they don't work together well. So it's good to know what stitches are going to work well with what kinds of threads. There are all kinds of things that you need to be able to know in order to be able to write your own stitch guides. And that's what this workshop is all about. So now I will tell you, I'm going to walk you through using an example canvas or a sample canvas and or I'm going to call it actually my study canvas. And you're, you know, if you decide you want to join me, then of course you can follow along using the same canvas that I'm using or using my canvas as your example, because you'll have a photograph of that canvas too. And you'll be able to take the notes that um, that you take during the workshop uh, inside the workbook because there is a workbook that goes along with it. So you'll have the opportunity to take notes and you'll be able to refer back to your workbook when you're finished with the workshop, which is a full day, starts at 10 central time in the morning. And then we end, we're going to try and wrap things up around 430 that afternoon. And we will take a break for lunch, but it'll be a short one. So it's going to be a full day. I can't promise you that you're going to have a stitch guide written for um, just any old canvas out of your stash. But I can tell you that you will have at the end of the workshop a master plan for the canvas that you've chosen to use for this particular workshop. If you just decide to use one out of your stash, because you can do that, too. If you'd rather um, use one out of your stash, then follow along with me with the one that I'm going to be using. That's perfectly fine, too. But there are a couple of things that I want to make sure that, you know, before you go stash diving um, to, to find a canvas. One is that you don't want the design to be a really big canvas. You're going to want it to be. I initially said no larger than five by five, but I know that that can be a harder size to find. So if you can make it no larger than seven by seven um, and that's actually so that's going to be about that big by about that big. Um, that's a decent size. It's something that you can uh, that you should be able to um, to stitch in a relatively relatively quick period of time. It's not like some, you know, 10 by 20 piece of, of art that you're going to have to <laughs> have to take and, and you know, dissect and then um, use these principles and apply them to the canvas and then come up with all the different options. That's why I think it's super important in a situation like this to keep the project small. And then you also want a, a design that's not going to be terribly um, detailed. So one that doesn't have a whole lot of shading on it. And uh, you can see on this particular canvas, let me scroll up just a little bit so you can see it better. This is actually a Mindy canvas uh, designs by Mindy. And this is a good example of the kind of canvas that I'm talking about. Now, let me go ahead and make that one bigger. Um, I don't know if this is going to. Yeah, that worked. OK, so you can see that this canvas is relatively simple. There is a little bit of shading on the pumpkin section, but and on the little um, arrows at the top are um, those little house shaped designs at the top. But 
um, the shading is very minimal. So something that this piece actually happens to be five by five and, um, and, and, and it's one that has not a whole bunch of colors on it. So you can see that there is that sort of magenta color. You have orange, yellow, green, black, and white. So what's that? Six colors. And I may be missing something in there. There may be a little bit. Well, I don't know. I think that's about that. So we'll say six, six to seven colors. So this canvas is a very simple, um, a simple design. Uh, you have geometric shapes and then your pumpkin is is just an outline. It's like a line drawing on that orange background. So this is um, this is an example of a kind of canvas that I would suggest being a, a good option or one that is a potential uh, candidate for you to pull from your stash. Now, something that you do want to make sure that you keep in mind um, is, and let me stop the share on this now, something that you do want to make sure that you keep in mind is that um, when you're working your way through the, the workshop or the workbook, um, you can make the notes that are applicable to the canvas that I'm using, or you can print out a couple of copies of the workbook and use one for the example that I'm sharing and then also one for your canvas. So, you know, there's a lot of leeway there. And I noticed that Leanne asked, she said, will you be giving us written information and guidelines? And yes, I will. That's part of the workshop. So those of you who are members of the Stitchers Club, this is included in your um in your member fee. So in your monthly membership, the the actual access to the workshop is included. Um, there is a VIP option for people who are members of the Stitchers Club. This The VIP option will include, and, and everybody, actually, I should say, let me back up. Everybody has access to a VIP option. The VIP option includes um, the recording of the workshop, and it also includes a follow-up um, session a couple of weeks later. Actually, it may be more like three weeks later. We're going to do that in November to give you a chance to actually um, apply some of the things that you learn in the workshop and then come back for a Q&A session, uh, a two hour Q&A session. We'll do a Zoom call and uh, and we'll get together and, and I'll answer questions. And you'll also have the opportunity to share um, your uh, your uh, thoughts with other stitchers who are participating in that VIP experience, too. So let me um, scroll back up here because I know we had some questions. So let me just make sure that I get those answered. Um, it's great to have all of you here again. Uh, oh, and Carol says it is a cool 83 degrees in Vero Beach. It's cool here today too. So I love that. It's definitely on this first day of fall. It's definitely, uh, there is a tinge of fall in the air for sure. All right. So uh, yes, Christine was asking, do you get the workbook ahead of time? So, yes, you will. Um, there's actually a Facebook group that goes along with the workshop and we're beginning to get people into that. People who have already registered for the workshop um, have access to that Facebook group and we're in the process now of getting people admission into that. Um, so those of you that uh, have already requested access, be sure and keep an eye on that Facebook group over the course of the next day or two, because you will be getting access to the Facebook group that will be part of this as a, uh, it's a pop-up Facebook group. So it'll be active through the, uh, right before Thanksgiving. So, um, and Leanne, that's a really good question. Is it possible to put a kit together? You know, that's something that we'll have to figure out right now. Um, I didn't have plans to do that. I was actually going to encourage you to work your way through the a canvas out of your stash. Um, but that's definitely something that I can consider and I'll have to see what we can come up with. It may be a little bit challenging because right now, um, as you all know, things are a little bit different when it comes to delivery on threads and even canvases because of COVID. So we have to keep that in mind. But um, but for sure, you'll have the information um, from the sample that I have that I'm going to be walking you through. And then um, you, know, you also have the opportunity to be able to apply what you're learning to a canvas from your stash. So the, uh, the name of the class is called. OK, wait a minute. Let's see. What the name of the class is called Stitch Guides Made Simple Live, and it's a live workshop. So that's why we're calling it live. We're going to be doing it on Zoom. And again, if you are a member of the Stitchers Club, then you get access to the workshop. If you're not a member of the Stitchers Club, I actually need to hop over here and do this really quickly to share with you. Um, I need to give you the link because I should have had this done already, but you know, 
best laid plans don't always work out. So this is this is the link to get to. There it is right there. So if you click that link, that'll take you to the information page where you can get all the details on the workshop, like what it includes and like the time. I think the time is on there. It should be. If it's not, y'all let me know and I'll go back and make sure we add it. But it is going to be on Saturday, October the 17th from 10, 10 in the morning Central Time until 430 Central Time in the afternoon. Followed up if you decide to participate in the VIP option. Followed up a few weeks later with a Q&A session, uh, a two-hour Q&A session on Zoom. Again, this is a Zoom workshop, so we do have a limited number of spaces. It's all first come, first serve, and we'll continue to accept registrations until we run out of space. So uh, right now we, we have a really nice number of people who are participating, and I'm super excited about it. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, you know, if you are um, not sure about you know your ability to choose stitches and threads for your projects, maybe you have maybe you maybe you live in a place where there's not a local shop. Well, you know that that presents a big problem because I mean you know you don't have access to all the threads that are available. So uh, one of the things that I'm going to be including during our time together is I'm going to be including some different suggestions for threads for different design components. Things that are commonly uh, depicted on canvases, things like Santa, Santa's beard, um, flowers, um, trying to think of what are some other things, sky, mountains, water, um, just your uh, your general design components. I'll be sharing some of my uh, favorite thread and stitch combinations for those. Uh, and then I'll also be sharing some information with you. Uh, we're going to be chatting about color. Color is a super important thing to be able to understand or to have a good understanding or grasp of uh, when you are beginning to write a stitch guide. Because I know a lot of times you might purchase a canvas and there might be one color on there that you're just not crazy about. But so you think you're going to change it. Well, you know, I've seen a project go south really fast because when you change one color so many times it creates what I call a snowball effect and it makes you feel like you need to change all the other colors, too. And so I'll share with you during our time together um, my advice on that and how to get around it or how to work through it. And uh, in addition to that, I'll I will will do the the canvas evaluation process and we'll also do um, a brief workshop or a mini session on color then we'll also talk about different ways to explore different stitches and threads and how those might work together and then we'll talk finally about creating your master plan so again because we have a limited amount of time together there's not going to be time to get your entire stitch guide Probably some of you may be able to, but for the most part, I'm not going to say everybody's going to be able to have a finished stitch guide ready to go and start working on their project right away because there, this is a process. It's not something that um, that you can do the first time you sit down to do it. So I will give you the guidelines and the the framework for doing that, and um, and and I think it's just going to be a lot of fun. So if you haven't checked out the blog post over on the Serendipity Needleworks website. Let me share that with you. The website is right there in the banner at the bottom and you can go to that website and it'll be the most recent post. Um, it's I think it, the name of it is just Stitch Guides Made Simple 2020 or Stitch Guides Made Simple Live. I'm not, it's one of those. It'll be the one that's um, at the very top of the page, though. So um, let me see. Let me hop back over here. Does anybody? Um, Leanne, I will have to let you know about that. I'm pretty sure you've signed up, but I will have to let you know. And Bobby, the Facebook group is called Stitch Guides Made Simple Live. So it's the same name as the, the workshop. And <clears throat> the Facebook group um, actually was in the Stitchers Club email on Mo yesterday, Monday. Yesterday was Monday. Um, and then if you are not a member of the Stitchers Club, but you've signed up for the workshop, then you'll be getting an email um, either later today or tomorrow that includes that link to join the Facebook group too. So, um, and <clears throat> let's see. Here we go. Okay. So what? Oh, <laughs> I see we have a connection here. Elsa, she used to love getting fried clams from the clam shack in Hingham. And we have Cam with us who is in Hingham. So isn't that fun? And Elle is actually in Australia now. So I love that. I love that. So, all right. So 
if uh, does anybody, I'll, I will go ahead. We have a few more minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to type those in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer those. If you're watching this as a recording and you still have a question, um, of course, you can always send us an email and let me share that email address with you. Where is that? There it is. So you can share your uh, you can share your questions with us via email at help at serendipitynedleworks.com. We're more than happy to help you out and get those questions answered. And, um, you know, I would again, I would really love to have you join me for the workshop in a few weeks. Um, if you have um, any thoughts or um, suggestions about um, some things that you'd like to see included. Um, if you're participating, please, of course, let me know that too, because I'm still working on all of the information that's going to be included. So, um, you know, there's a possibility that we'll, we'll be able to add, um, you know, one or two suggested ideas. But um, I, again, I am happy to be here with you this afternoon. I hope that um, that you will consider joining me. Um, if you are watching this as a recording, um, please, also share where you're watching from. I failed to tell y'all that in the very at the very beginning. Um, if you're watching this as a recording, let me know. Say hello and say hi from where you are in this great, big, wonderful world that we live in. And um, again, if you have questions, either send them, send them to us at help at serendipitynedleworks.com or you can leave them in the chat box, too. And I will do my best to get those answered uh, for you in, in just ASAP. So all right. So we have a couple more questions. Let me see. Um, so no, Heather, the only thing that you'll need to have on hand is um, at just you'll want to print out the workbook and a canvas that you may want to um, use as your study canvas during the day, workshop day. So those are the only things that you'll really need to have on hand. Don't necessarily need to have any threads. You could pull some if you had some in mind or if you bought a canvas and you had threads that you purchased to go with it. Of course, you know, bring those along with you, too. And, um, you know, and then we can maybe see what we can come up with that would um, you know, be some some uh, give you some good, uh, a good place to start. So, all right. Um, oh, I'm so glad Martha says that she's with us from California the first time watching and she's loving her evenings of the stitch challenge. And that's something that I want to make sure that I chat with you about too, or share with you too. Um, we do have another call tonight. So we have, we are six nights in, we have nine, six and nine is 15. Yeah, nine nights to go. So we have four nights left this week and five nights next week. Um, we're gathering at eight o'clock every evening. And let me go ahead and share that with you. For those of you who haven't, um, who are not familiar with that, this is the link to sign up for the Stitch Challenge. We're doing this. As sort, it's just a fun little um, way to to for me to give back to you. I'm using this as my, my um what I, I think I called it my reverse birthday gift to y'all. My birthday is at the end of September. So I'm sharing my 15 of the, the stitches that I consider essential for every needle pointer to know. So far we've gone through, let's see, we've gone through reverse mosaic. Well, no, excuse me, diagonal mosaic. We've gone through, y'all are going to have to help me here. Those of you who have been participating, we've been through, let's see, diagonal mosaic, um, Hungarian, Hungarian ground. Let's see. I know. Let me hop back over here so I can see. This is from the Stitch Challenge. Um, so the and Lee and the videos for the Stitch Challenge are inside of the Facebook group for the Stitch Challenge under the video tab. Um, so we have. Um, oh, okay. I love this. So uh, <laughs> Carol says, um, th oh, "Thank you, Carrie Brick." Um, okay. You woven plat. Good. Thank y'all for helping me here. Cause I was just drawing a blank and I got distracted there. Carol says to help her loosen up in her needlepoint journey. It helps her to remember that there are no needlepoint police to answer to. <laughs> it's all good. Good, good, good. Okay. So yes, so absolutely. We've done woven flat, woven plat, Byzantine, uh, diagonal mosaic, brick. What was the other one y'all? Wait a minute. Woven. Okay. Monday was, was diagonal mosaic. I know we've done Byzantine. Wait a minute. Let me, let me, where is that other? I think it's, I think I left it upstairs. Um, Hungarian ground was last night and we've, now I know there's, okay. We did diagonal mosaic, Hungarian, brick, Byzantine, woven plat, and Hungarian ground. That's it. Those six. And then we have four more this week 
and five more next week. So we're getting together at eight o'clock um, central time. And I'm sharing a new stitch each evening and I do a demonstration. I tell you some different uses for that stitch. I share some different threads that you might consider using. And we're just having a really fun time. We've had a ton of people join us. It's been great fun to see everybody. Um, and I think it's just a, a fun way for us to kind of lose ourselves in, uh, in, in, in some canvas embroidery stitches and, and just kind of escape for a little while into the, what I call the wonderful world of needlepoint. So if you haven't joined us, I would love for you to join us. Um, we're, like I said, we're having tons and tons of fun. Um, we've had lots of people join us live for the calls. I'm doing a little, um, we're doing some prizes. So there are ways that you can get prizes um, or you can qualify for prizes. What we're doing is uh, every picture that you post, you get a point, but the picture needs to include our hashtags. So our hashtags are, and that this is included in the email that you get when you sign up, but um, the hashtags are hashtag serendipity needleworks, which is the name of my business. And then also hashtag serendipity stitch challenge. So those two, you can use either or, or both and uh, then share your pictures on social media and you'll get a point for the pictures you know, that, that you've shared. And then you also get a point for showing up live. For, so for those of you who have been showing up live, you're getting a, a bonus point for being there um, in, in real time. So at the end, what we'll do is we will be uh, awarding prizes based on the people who have the most number of points. If we have um, ties, then what we'll have to do is do some drawings. Um, and the people who have posted their, um, you know, people who have not been able to post pictures, rather, uh, what we'll do is we will have some prizes that we'll draw uh, from everybody who's participated, but who hasn't shared pictures. Because I know not everybody has social media and um, not everybody has a camera that they can use to take pictures of their projects. So we want to be fair about that, too. So, OK. Um, so yes, <laughs> we have good deal. Carol, thank you so much um, for sharing that uh, all those stitches. That was, I appreciate you doing that. Thank you so, so much. And um, let's see the, I'm seeing, all right, we've got a lot of people who have shared the different stitches. So thank y'all for doing that. And so for those of you who are, um, who are not doing social media, who don't have a Facebook account um, and happen to be watching this on YouTube, um, you know, again, don't worry. You'll get your name into the hat for some prizes too. We have some really cool ones. I have some stitch, or excuse me, some laying tools, some silk ribbon. I have some stitch books. I have some needle minders and I have some tapestry needles. So we have a bunch of different things and um, we are trying to tally up. It's keeping Riley busy. Y'all are posting so many pictures. <laughs> She's really been busy trying to track everything down and keep up with the points. So, um, you know, we haven't tallied everything yet. And to get us a, a where we are now leaderboard set up, but uh, we're, we're working on it. So hang in there with us. And um, if you have uh, any questions about this, of course, always please feel free to reach out to us. I'll put the um, help address back up there to uh, the help at serendipity needleworks.com is the best place to get your questions answered the most quickly. That um, address has somebody monitoring it uh, throughout the week. And so I will end on that because we've gone beyond our 30 minutes. Um, I appreciate you being here with me. I look forward to seeing those of you who are joining me for the 2020 Stitch Challenge this evening on a Zoom call. Uh, again, it's not too late to sign up. And until next week, happy stitching. Bye for now.